Hey, Doc, the wood surgeon here. Today I want to um, share with you my tips and techniques on how to do wood bow, toe, wood bow tie inlays. I watched a lot of videos on YouTube and read several articles on how to do inlays. And just like I did throughout my career in surgery, I've taken little pearls from each technique and come up with my own technique that I think is the simplest, easiest, and best way. Whenever I approach something, I always try to look at it, how can I do it faster, better, and cheaper? So let's start with this. This was my very first purchase for a router. It was clearly cheaper than this one, um, but I've asked too much of this router. I've planed tables with it. I've done bow ties with it, and it just is a little asking a little bit too much for this trim router. I also started off, as you can see in here, with a uh, straight cut bit and uh, that's what I had read people used. I didn't like that very much either, um, and I would find that that bit would just cut and bite in the wood and go past the line. So then I switched to a spiral upcut bit when I bought this new router. And the big advantage of the big router versus a little router is that this thing weighs a lot more. Therefore, the bit, when it takes a bite, has a harder time making this router move than this little one. It's also steadier because it's got a wider base plate. So this was not cheaper, but clearly it is a lot better for this application in doing inlays. A couple of other things I want to show you before we get started. Um, love this little ruler. I highly recommend one to do nice measurements for you doing your inlays. Um, also a nice mechanical pencil. This is the Pentel. I will show you how I use this. I think this is absolutely key. And then a utility knife. And when I start my inlays, the first thing I do is I put a brand new blade in. And then the other thing that I've done off camera was I got out my little sharpening pad here. I just use water and sandpaper. And I did a quick little sharpen on my chisels. I don't have anything fancy. These are some old shop chisels that I got as a gift years ago. One day I'll get a really nice set of chisels, but they work fine. And then the other thing I got here uh, ready to work is I keep my little, uh, my compressor so I can blow out the hole if it doesn't get suctioned up by the router. And I'll have the router on suction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to move the um, camera over and get started and show you how we do an inlay. For this demonstration today, I just got a piece of poplar screwed down on my tool bench. And here I've got one of my uh, bow tie inlays, and this is actually Kingwood. And I saw people would use double-sided tape, they'd use hot glue, they would use crazy glue, and really, you don't need any of that. I just simply, first thing I do is I mark the bow tie. It's going to be number one. I'm going to put a, I'm saying, let's say it's going on a table here because I got a crack right here. This way, I line up the one and one. I'll never get the bow ties mixed up. That's absolutely key. Because each bow tie is going to have a little different shape. And I simply hold the bow tie down. I take my pencil at a 45 degree angle. And I go all around the bow tie, marking it. And if you go past the points, it doesn't matter. And this is really, you don't have to glue this down or anything to do this. I go around it several times because this is going to get sanded off anyway, but I want a nice line and I'm holding the pen at 45 so I get right in the crotch. And here you can see the outline that I've made with my mechanical pencil. Now the next step is to take the knife and score cutting the fibers and then we'll go in and route after that. A couple key things on scoring is you start at the corner and go to the middle and you can go you'll go right past the waist each corner right past the waist and then for the the ends you start at the corner and i go about three quarters of the way come the other direction if you pass point and cut a line pass on your corners it's going to show up and it doesn't look good the other key here is I cut on the inside of the line, not on the line. I found that that's too tight, that's too loose a fit. If you go outside of the line, that's gonna be way too loose as well. 
your first pass with the knife should be a very soft, easy pass. You don't want to go too hard into the wood because you'll find if you do that, the grain of the wood can grab your knife and you'll end up following the grain. So I'm going to put it in the corner right on the edge of the line, on the inside of the line. I'm going to make a light pass following the inside of that line. And I can go right past the waist because that's into the middle. It's going to make it hogged out. Then I'll come back. I'm putting a little more pressure. Each pass, I put a little more pressure, so I've got a nice, nice notch. So I've done it, that releases the fibers on the outside. Now I'll start at the corner, very carefully, and go slow with easy pressure right inside that line. I'll go about three quarters of the way. This up view, you can see where I've scored all the lines. Now you'll notice if you look at the blade, you've got the bevel and it gets thick. I don't score it all the way down to the thick part of the blade because in doing that, you're actually pushing the fibers apart and make your hole a little bit bigger. So I've scored about 75% of the bevel. And on hard woods, hard woods, it takes a little more effort than this softwood poplar. But you get the idea here. You can see where I went past the middle. That way I've got a nice clean corner there because I was able to go right past it rather than starting at that. And then I didn't pass point any of the four corners. So I've set the depth of the router so it's just a little bit shy of my bow tie. And uh, that way the bow tie will be a little bit proud after it's set in and then it'll be sanded smooth. So what I found in routing these out you want to save the edge for the very last. The least amount of material that you take with the bit, the more control you have over the router. If you try to take a large bite with the router, it's going to want to dig in or run away. So what I do is I hog out the center. My first pass, I'll come to about this line here. Second pass, I'll repeat. And I start in the middle, go up and down. I go to that same line again. I don't go past it. The third pass is the final one. So the, the final pass, I will hog out the center and then very slowly, I will move around the edge, getting as close as I can and sneaking up on it, sneaking up on it with having a maximum control over the router and taking a small amount of material so that I don't route past my cut edge. So we'll get routing here and show you how I do that. So here you can see I've done my two passes, went up to my first line. Now I'm gonna to go to full depth, start in the center, hog out the center, and then I'll slowly work towards the edges all the way around. And you know, you've got two directions that you can take the router. Going a counter to the spin, it'll dig in. If you go with the spin, it'll run away. So I typically like to pull the router on the left side towards me so that if it bites, it's gonna to go towards the middle, 
rather than biting going to the edge. Um, so I'll do this first side over here and uh, show you how I do that. So here you can see where I've finished up. I've come just within a millimeter of the edge and left a slight little rim that I'll finish with the chisel. I'm gonna go ahead and finish out the rest of this and then we'll uh, show you the chisel work. So now I'll take the chisel and I usually like to start at the waist. I'll set the chisel blade right there at that edge I made with the knife. Lift it up vertical, make sure it's nice and clean. And then I'll slowly work down. I start with the, I put the corner of the chisel in set and then I lay it level so it's right back in that same groove spot that I like. And then the corners, I'll stop about that far from the corner and I'll finish that the whole way down. And then the other thing I'll do is if it's not quite vertical, I'll just pair it like that. And you need a good sharp chisel and you can clean that edge up really nicely. So um, I'll show you how I do the corners. Corners are a little more difficult. If you have a bow tie that's got really sharp corners, I find it a pain and I don't like bow ties. I'll come back from this side, make some cuts. I'm trying to just loosen that material up. And then I'll come in by hand and kind of go back and forth, side to side. And be very careful not to torque. You don't want to torque the chisel against your outside edge because you'll push it away. So just keep working at it. The flat part towards your edge. Almost got it here and a little bit at the bottom. You really want a nice sharp chisel to do this. So I've got it cleaned up. Um, a couple areas I want a little more vertical. So a technique I'll use is I'll get the chisel set where I want it, and I'm gonna I've got it below the lip, and I push my thumb against hold the chisel, and go just straight down, and that allows me to get that force to do that pairing to get a nice vertical cut. I'll show you. So you see, I got the numbers lined up one and one. I could probably get this bow tie to go in if I were to hammer it in right now, but I don't want this sharp edge of my bow tie damaging the edge of the piece that I'm inlaying it into. So you've got two choices. You can um, gently chisel away the corner to give you a 45. Actually, a couple choices. Just be very careful um, that you don't go into your own finger. You can use a little sandpaper to sand that down. Or what I do, and this is why it's important to have it numbered, so I make sure I don't bevel the wrong side.
There you can see the nice little soft beveled edge and that is gonna help it slide in. So I've got glue across the bottom up the sides. Um, and the strength of the bow tie really comes from the glued interface at the bottom of the bow tie. The angles do provide some mechanical advantage, but really it's the glue across the bottom. So now with this beveled edge, it'll, I can get it just to get started. So it's just seated. Put a little block on top. Get that bow tie seated. Now finish it. Now, if I was using a fragile wood, I would keep the wood on top, but this is king wood, which is, it is really tough wood. So I've got it seated. It's just slightly a bit proud like I wanted. Um, I probably could have gone a little bit less on the router. Now, something that if you've got a gap that you're not happy with, um, go ahead and get your iron out and steam this. That'll swell up the wood help it come together and the glue will hold it. The other thing I do is I'll let this dry about 10, 15 minutes and then I'll go ahead and sand it when the glue's a little bit tacky so that the sawdust from the sanding will go ahead and stick to the glue and give me like a mixed um, filler around that edge. So I'm gonna let this set up for a little bit, come back, sand it and show you the finished product. Back to the faster, better, cheaper. I had a five inch orbital sander and I hate sanding and finishing. So um, I bought this Bosch 75-6, six inch orbital sander with turbo mode. It has been an absolute life changer for me. I can completely sand a table in just an hour, hour and a half. And, and um, it goes by so fast that I don't mind sanding anymore. And then another video I'll talk about finishing, but I've switched to shellac because it's, it's fast as well. So we'll go ahead and get this taken care of. I have it in turbo mode. I've got some 80 grit on here. So here's a finished product. I put a couple little coats of shellac on it, did a quick little sand. Um, you know, I'm a, I've got a little bit of OCD and a perfectionist. That corner is not absolutely perfect, but a customer, I can tell you, will never notice that if you don't point it out to them. But I like to try to make these things perfect, tight, so there's no seam visible whatsoever between the bow tie and the inline. Thanks for watching.